What's up guys, it's Mr. Janvet and today we are back on the Pokemon Showdown server. But now we don't have a battle today, nor do I have my usual team building with Jam Process. I have a lot of draft players within my viewer base. Some of you guys don't even play Smogon at all, but just watch me, you know, whatever your reasons are, or just to help improve in draft as a whole. And so, uh, to kind of cater and, and ride the momentum of the team building with Jam series, I'm going to add draft league team building to the equation as well but since i'm not the most avid draft player i decided to invite uh, one of the top draft players to help guide you guys through this process um he's actually the head hacker of the society he takes care of all of the draft related stuff head draft hacker i should say um and yeah so zazo i'm not even gonna go into all the stuff I'll let him tell you um, and he's not tooting his own horn it's just I want you to sh know that this is not just some random guy I found off the street um, it's actually been a long time viewer of mine um, go back years and so um, it's time to introduce him to y'all so go ahead my man hey, hey what's happening what's popping everybody you got the BBC King so um, I've been playing draft for about five six years now played a little bit in the GPA taught some players like poke game and not necessarily taught but worked with a handful of players and really the last year I've been focusing on how to improve the audience of draft leagues and this is what our goal me and Jamvad are gonna be knocking out uh, bigger fan base of the draft league format and just kind of increasing um, the overall knowledge and going over the processes of how to team build, how to draft better, and to really have an idea how to really go about draft league. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so kind of to start off, uh, what do you think is, firstly, just describe um draft league and the different types because i think a lot of people including myself before we had that conversation thought that you know draft was restricted to i think the more popular one well popular in terms of a youtuber um you know what youtubers play which is more the kind of um i'm not even sure what it's called but you know what i'm talking about versus uh the spl-esque version so um yep. if, if you could describe the differences and and you know, just go through that. Yep. So we have three different main formats in the draft league community. We have the just draft leagues, which generally you're going to be drafting between 10 to 12 mons, depending on the league. You're going to have um, team tours, which are um, things like DPL which are formats where you actually get drafted as a player onto a team and then you play different generations of draft as draft has been around since Gen 6. And then you have the tournament scene where you draft eight Pokemon and you essentially um, get put into a pool of about four players. And if you advance through your pool, in the tournament phase, you just keep knocking out the wins and till you lose, and then you're out of the tournament. But if you continue to win, you just ended up making a finals and kind of go from there. So, in regards to the differences between um, Draft League and Smogon, is that in regards to the things that you need that is popular in Draft League are... Um, things that you need on essentially every single team, hazard control, speed tiers, typing wise, you have to have grounded poisons to prevent yourself from getting overwhelmed by um, T spikes, uh, electric um, immunities, for example, uh, premier ground types that aren't four times a week or have some kind of countermeasure to volt switch mon so you just don't auto lose to momentum or Pokemon like Regieleki and you have 
certain steel types that um, when you're looking for elite steel types, you're either going to be looking for the cell steelers in the world that can kind of switch into everything and can be an all-purpose mon every single game that you bring it in because only having two weaknesses and a million resistances mm -hmm. comes into play. Or you can have your safety blanket mons like the Brongzongs of the world that can pretty much take any two hits, get up your stealth rocks, and once again is your natural check to a lot of things like, um, you know, fairy types, mega dancing, stuff like that. So the other differences between um, Smogon and Draft is that there are different draft leagues that do have Generation 8 Megas, and um, just depending on what exactly you're doing, but um, that comes into play too because um, you have things that you've never seen before, like Dragon Dance Mega Aerodactyl, which is mm -hmm. not seen ever before. Um, you have, um, you know, kind of Megas that... For example, another one is Mega Garchomp with Scale Shot. You know, Mega Garchomp right. got nerfed right. to Garchomp because of the speed tiers, but it's really gained a lot of value, the fact that there's no more hidden power ice and the fact that you can have Scale Shot. That really rolls up in, in value in Generation 8. And so <clears throat> in regards to how you um, improve your game, uh, me and Jamvad will kind of have this series to collectively um, go over so many different ideas but basically the first stage is to uh, first I, I would recommend um, either watching somebody who has played draft league whether that be just watching a couple replays whether that be watching um, a couple draft league videos to kind of understand that the goal of draft league in the team building aspect is that you're going to see things that you would never uh, see in Smogon. The whole point of Draft League is that your opponent doesn't know what you're going to bring, so you're going to be facing some wild things that you have to combat while playing and also combat in the team building aspect so you just don't get overwhelmed um, turn one by a dragon dancer and Krosma or you know something like that that you wouldn't necessarily ever see so when you do draft as well always have an idea of how you want to use the team as um, every single team um, doesn't have to be identical because you have all kinds of different play styles but in regards to th things like hazard control in regards to things like speed tiers. So in regards to speed tiers, you're going to have um, at least two Pokemon be faster than base 100s at minimum, even on the bulkier teams, because when you have premier breakers like Mega Medicham, if you're playing uh, League with Megas, or even things like Garchomp, which is base 102, um, that thing can get really scary really fast with Swords Dances, so you don't always want to rely on being able to beat things defensively. You have to keep in mind, um, how do I revenge things after they set up? And um, having countermeasure to hazard control, just not rely on heavy-duty boots every single week because your opponent is going to have knockoff and that's only going to work for so much and uh yeah i mean there's all kinds of um fun interesting techs in draft league which um the more you play the more you realize that you can outplay gimmicks um whether that be like a um a set that only would work in a 1v1 exchange between one Pokemon and another Pokemon. Um, we're going to be going over versatility in regards to um, things like 
scissor generally require um, fire coverage, but you can have a middle ground way to deal with scissor in things like will o wisp which is a multifaceted move because you can cripple something like uh, Scizor with Will-O-Wisp and you can target the rest of the Pokemon on their team that are physical attackers with Will-O-Wisp as well because carrying fi fire coverage and your opponent doesn't bring a Scizor can potentially leave you at a disadvantage because now you just kind of brought like a dead move per se. Hmm. <laughs> So we'll go into all that, you know, because I know um, there are probably a million questions. How do you know how to how do you know when to we'll go into all that. And so definitely leave your questions. Um, this is sort of a intro to Zazo and a sort of uh, intro to the types of draft. Um, so could you tell them where where you've gotten your experience um, and why they should uh, you know, again, guys, I'm the one asking this, so he's not tooting his own horn. Um, but just kind of give the people a little rundown of your history results wise. So back in the day, the very first established league that wasn't necessarily YouTube based mm -hmm. was a league called NPL, which um, MV actually was in the D League a long time ago. And the NPL was known as the most competitive uh, draft league at that time back in, I believe it was 2017, mm -hmm. which um, me and another player, uh, Gypsy King, really thrived in that league. And this league really um, built a foundation for a lot of players because what the NPL, the reason why they got recognition is because they were the first league um, a player named TTM Jolts created a tournament, the very first draft league tournament where he hosted any and all draft league players to play in this huge 160-player um, base where you face all kinds of different players from any league and you really got to test your skills. Mm -hmm. And if you were impressive enough, you were invited to the league like NPL because not all of the premier leagues, you had to establish a name for yourself to have high win rates to then have a chance to be in these higher leagues to then be successful in those leagues. So um, I was able to do well in leagues like the NPL. I've won um, leagues like the CPC. Um, I've recently won a cash gang tour, which was a tournament where you played generation six, seven, and eight. I played about, um, I believe 30, 20 to 30 games. And I've only and in the entire tournament, you're only really able to lose about about five times, maybe. So I was able to um, win a tournament where, once again, it was a prize pool about, um, I think it was a little over $1,000. So, of course, you have the best draft league players there. As the incentive is to not only get the recognition to win cash gang tour, but to actually prove yourself in you know and and the more games that you play the more tested you are so that is an established um tournament um one of the tournaments i was re referencing the ttm tour i ended up getting third place um in summer showdown um i think i've collectively won seven or eight different leagues and um you know over the years I've always kind of been on top of every single league that I've played in for the past four to five years. So, mm -hmm. and again, guys, you know he's not here. Like, look how cool I am. I'm just saying that to let you know that the information we're about to go over is to be taken 
very very seriously if you're an up-and-coming draft player or you're just somebody who is curious about the draft league format as a whole um, very 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 important to note um, but yeah so now we've gone over you know the types um, and you know why anybody should listen to what you have to say um, now where just kind of a, a wrap up to this one I'm not gonna have this episode be super long um, I probably should have had some visuals for this we'll figure out how to do that but leave your questions down below on some things that you're curious about uh, but to wrap up what do you think a draft player needs to know in a macro sense in one of the videos we're gonna actually go over every like role you know in depth I guess you kind of touched on it um, but what on a macro level do you think a draft player needs to know to be successful in order for a draft league player to be successful they need to draft a team that has the functions to have the ability to have good hazard control which is to not only just have one stealth rock user we're looking at three four stealth rock users on a team options to rapid spin and defog options to spike and t spikes possibly sticky webs to have speed tiers that not only are over base 100 110 but to kind of are well balanced so um even having pokemon that are base 80 speed tier is something important because you don't want to have a huge speed gap between a clefable and your latios because you're going to have a lot of pokemon like needle king who are going to run modest because they would never run timid because they can't outspeed a latios but they would never have to run that much speed because the next speed tier would be a clefable um, other things is that there are different concepts that you can abuse such as a flood concept so just because you have a water type or a fighting type doesn't necessarily mean that you can't draft two so a very common strategy is draft uh, double fighting per se so for example a Keldeo will weaken the bulky psychic type that might be physically defensive for your um, Mega Metacham but then they can't be specially defensive and Reuniclus is maybe their premier fighting uh, check so you want to incorporate different concepts to your building into your team and to always have the idea of n knowing how to win whether that be offensively or defensively to have a win condition that can operate where it can win the exchange versus the majority of mons once certain conditions are met and to um, have backup plans to your opponent's main win conditions because even though you might have a win condition you might not ever be in a position to win because if your opponent sets up before you do then you're going to just lose the game from there so those are going to be the basics to every single player in the draft league community must establish all of these roles all these ideas and once you start getting more advanced we're going to be going over uh, more advanced concepts as, as we go so right perfect perfect and again you know it, it's hindsight i just kind of like i literally hit up zazo like yesterday i was like bro what do you think about a and so this was very much off the cuff the reason i'm saying that is because you know with my team building series that i have now obviously you guys have grown accustomed to there being something on the screen to help you understand the words so this is closer to a podcast than an actual team building video but for the future ones we're gonna actually have visuals um but yeah uh is there anything else you want to add uh as a kind of intro episode or do you feel like you've covered most of what you wanted 
Um, I guess the last thing that we'll go over is that there's more uh, mind games than just playing each game individually. There's more to draft league because there's also going to be tactics. If you're in a draft league and you have 15 other competitors, we're also going to be going over strategies of if you know who the top competitors are um, to set yourself up for playoffs so that you can go over transactions and free agencies to give yourself the best winning percentages if you have a good shot of making playoffs. So it's not just playing every single game. You also have to consider in the draft league format your surroundings. Even in team tours, your value as a player will consistently go up or down because if coaches are going to be uh, drafting you, um, having recency bias can be a good thing or bad thing. So what recency bias is, is that if you're the hottest player off the block and Currently. you've, yeah, and if you uh been winning a lot of games recently, that can help and hurt you because you'll get drafted onto a team, but that can hurt you because you don't want to be you want to be going for as cheap as possible so the rest of your team um, will have enough budget to pay for other elite players right there so um, right and, and I mean yeah. don't be overly concerned if you didn't understand the because if you're like if you're a more experienced draft player you understand what he just said if not don't worry um, all will be understood and explained um, in a bit but this is an introductory video and so leave the questions in the description uh, in the comment section below and the things you'd like um, clarified no matter what we're gonna have to sort of we're gonna pretty much start um, from out of the starting blocks but um, as we go along I'm gonna be gathering the questions that you guys leave and tailoring the information a bit more also you know suggestions um, as far as how we can make this better moving forward I always appreciate it so um, that being said thank you for watching hit the like button if you're excited for this new thing um, and yeah peace peace